Welcome back. You're still watching PLOS TV Africa. And of course, it's time for Off the Press. It's where we do our quick review of the major news headlines across uh, papers in the country this morning. Uh, we're joined by our uh, senior news editor, uh, Mr. Coyote Ladengde. Thank you so much for stopping by and for joining us this morning. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be it here. Looks like you still want to be in bed. Yeah, you know, thank God we now have, uh, is it projected winner now? <laughs> We're <laughs> so seeing all manner see. of new words now. We are yeah, everybody's winner. trying to be careful. I was told yeah. it's not emergence, it is in just one mm -hmm. and so many things. Yeah. And congratulatory messages have started pouring in and we're wondering. Obviously, it's just a matter of technicality, <laughs> but so nobody can come and say, you said this, you declared him exactly. winner. Who gave you the authority to do that? So we just have to wait for there, the is, final announcement from the is there is there uh, any likelihood that this might change that's why i've said uh, projected winner uh, uh, I elected think, exactly i think president uh, trump it's, it's it's someone that uh, america will not forget in a long time uh, he has brought a new dimension to the electoral system to how a president should talk to how a president should behave. I was watching CNN but, but, but I think that's a fair thing, though. Um, for every president that comes to, there must be some sort of, you know, Uniqueness. conversation. <laughs> yes, Obama came, he made history. You know, like way. I said, I, I was looking at all the, uh, 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 what do you call it now, concession speeches by different presidents. So SCNN was doing a whole lot of chronology of how they accepted, oh, we fought hard, but you won. And here is Mr. President saying that, we're waiting. Hey, it's not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're waiting. Exactly. Anyway, let's start with the Punch newspaper and see what's uh, going on um, in our shores. Uh, fears over second wave. Uh, that's a rise in COVID-19 cases. Uh, fears over second wave as states shun safety protocols. Places of worship, gatherings, others. Dump use of face masks. And SARS protests may be responsible for recent rise in cases. Mm. That's virologists uh, talking on um, the recent cases. And then there's a picture on the front page, self-explanatory um, accidents. Uh, just above the masthead, let's uh, read what's on the screen. Phone users rise, rose rather, to 204.87 million in September. That's according to the MCC. INEC. Yakubu begins five year second term today. Southwest governors, monarchs meet, demand more protection for region. Many policemen still missing, unaccounted for. That's uh, the police panel talking. Uh, let's go back down uh, to. The side, beside the masthead, we have Rep's panel demands NMPC's response to alleged $20.3 billion withdrawals. Jonathan Canvas's e-voting berates politicians over violence. For those that might be wondering who Jonathan is, of course, he's the former president of uh, the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, quickly to the bottom of the paper now, just above those pictures, uh, below those pictures rather, we have former robbery kingpin, uh, Shina Rambo resurfaces now a preacher. <clears throat> Some good news, hopefully. Uh, Lagos clears uh, 253 suspected arsonists uh, to prosecute 92. Audit infractions again. Ogun Assembly summons Amosun's ex aide. Ondo traders, kidnappers, reduce ransom demand to five million. And the man of the, still the man of the moment, uh, that's Trump, uh, launches legal battle as world leaders hail Biden. Over to you now. Quite a lot. I, I wish I could touch all because the, uh, they actually deserve to be on the front page, I must say. Uh, but let's look at the boldest one that talks about the fear of second wave. Um, I think it's... Um, is multifaceted if you want to look at the factors responsible. Why the NSAS uh, protest is definitely a factor. If you look at the way people were holding hands, if you look at the way people were clustering, you know, at the beginning, we saw a lot of them wearing fixed masks. But when the number was increasing day by day, uh, the passion and the, a lot of things involved made people to abandon all those safety protocols. But having said that, we should look 
the bigger picture. The bigger picture is what led people to that, uh, um, to that level of abandonment. What led people to say that I don't care whether I have COVID or not. I want a reformed system. I want a justiciable system. So why will you be able to trace the factors responsible? Let's look at the bigger factor responsible for people abandoning all these safety protocols. Yes, I looked at the record of NCDC as of yesterday and were able to explain that Lagos didn't just have a high number. It's a cumulation of two days because Lagos recorded zero on Saturday. Okay. So they calculated Saturday and Sunday. But trust me, um, this is expected. Everyone, not everyone, now when I mean everyone, I'm just speaking in general terms, that everyone seems to go back to their normal life. They don't want to accept the new normal that we were talking about at the, when this issue of COVID started. So for me, I think uh, it's time for us to put on our thinking cap. It's so sad that even Lagos State Government is beginning to close up some isolation centers that were created you know, temporarily because of the fact that, oh, this number has seriously reduced, but those centers may have to be reopened. I'm not preaching doom now. I'm just looking at the reality before us yeah, that, that we can't, you know, ignore the fact that we are already on the second wave of this lockdown, except we do something fast, except we work towards uh, the vaccine, which I don't think we are working towards. We're waiting for... The to civilized plan <laughs> to do that. I, I was actually going to quickly, uh, before you move on to something else, uh, get your quick thoughts on the uh, number of, uh, the NCC has confirmed now that it is yellow fever. Uh, the cases we heard in Enugu, the mysterious deaths in Enugu okay. and Delta, there was a report that it has been confirmed that as yellow fever. What worries you the most about the re-emergence, especially now that we have a pandemic? Exactly. And that's to also let us know that um, when you even talk about NCDC, a lot of people have even restricted them to, to COVID-19. COVID and uh, <laughs> we're yet to come out of Lhasa, don't also forget. And that's to let us know that um, malaria fever still kills every day. So... If you think malaria is as simple as that and it's keep killing such numbers, that's to let us know that yellow fever is here, yellow fever hasn't gone, we need to pay all the necessary attention. On the part of media too, maybe we also need to do that reawakening that um, the, 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 the protocol shouldn't just be about COVID too. There are other kinds of diseases that are taking people. Uh, we might not, not even call COVID novel again because uh, virtually everybody, even a child, already knows what is COVID-19. So we need to continue that orientation across board. Let everybody know that uh, disease is disease. And disease is not a normal thing. It kills. It reduces your lifespan. It does a whole lot of things that will not definitely all go well. All right, let's, yes. let's move on to something else. You know, one of the stories also on the punch this morning is talking about uh, police personnel still missing, uh, says uh, the panel, says many police um, the men are still missing and unaccounted for. Um, what, what does this sound like to you? I, I, I want to be very careful because this is a very sensitive issue. Sensitive in the sense that um, uh, m most times when I drive through some of the police stations on the major roads and I see them completely raced down, I try to do a whole lot of um, uh, a whole lot of behaving like a motivational speaker to say that uh, are we going to achieve this reform? Is what is this reform about? If we are destroying the current dilapidated um, structure, what are we From expecting? The ashes, a exactly. Will rise. So I now remember the scripture <laughs> that says that. Oh, uh, let's have beauty rise from these ashes. Let's. Take a look. Let's take a deeper look. Where should police stations be situated? What kind of strategic, you know, position should we have police stations? Uh, because uh, we need to get, we need to put the past behind us. Police, uh, I, I don't know whether this is a campaign of uh, uh, drawing sympathy or not. I don't have my facts. But the point is, that should not be heard to say that you don't know the whereabouts of this policeman, were there a case of kidnapping? Were there a case of um, um, these officers being taken away? I'm just asking questions as a journalist yes. to know what the IG is really saying. We know that the police is seriously angry. We know what the IG has said, that uh, defend yourself by using your arms. We don't know the import 
of that statement. We sincerely hope that that statement is not taken out of context because that will take us to a more severe police brutality nature that we are kicking against. So it shouldn't be an opportunity for police officers to you know, unleash mayhem on innocent people. Uh, let it be clear, let it be clear that uh, the rules of engagement still stand irrespective of what went wrong? Well, what, what, I, I, well, I don't want to stick too much time on it because I was going to also mention, you know, what the, this also says about um, how the police can also rescue. Um, I mean, how does the police then find ordinary citizens? You know, if they're missing, if, the, if they can't find, you know, uh, fellow police officers um, who just well. So let's move over to the. Um, let's move. Let's over give it to, as rhetorical yeah, question. <laughs> let's move over to the uh, Nigerian Tribune uh, this morning. There's a couple of stories over there. One of them from Kano State that got a lot of people talking yesterday, and that is his bar destroys 200 million naira worth of beer in Kano. <sighs> um, also, uh, Wike meets uh, Southeast governors over Oibo crisis. Uh, on the NSAR's protest, once again, Lagos wants 253 protesters released. Police arrest two WhatsApp group administrators in Oshun State. And also uh, on Southwest Economic Assets, it says here, Southwest Economic Assets need special protection. Uh, Southwest governors, uh, traditional rulers demand at meeting with uh, President Buhari's chief of staff, IGN ministers. Also, 75 billion naira economic sustainability plan, Lagos, Kano, Abia get priority. Panic as cement, uh, uh, cement rather, iron rod uh, prices skyrocket. Same with onions. Um, and also, uh, the last one we would uh, quickly throw in armed guards avert another pirate attack on Lagos workers. COVID-19 not yet over, NCDC tells prospective core members. Um, all right, I think let's uh, stop there uh, because of the time that we have. Okay, um, uh, two stories, if you allow me. Uh, I think the one you didn't read about is the picture of the day. If you look at the picture of that, you'll see uh, Southwest ministers, you know, commiserate with uh, oh, Ashiwa yes. Jubola. Chinubu. Missed out on that one. Um, you know, I was having this conversation in the newsroom with a producer one day, and I said, yours is to gather the story. The reporter is to report what he sees, but an editor sees the story behind the story. <laughs> you know, um, I, I understand that um, this, this visit is laced with a whole lot of meanings in terms of these ministers, some of them have been to Lagos before now. We've had governors from Southwest being to Lagos. Why didn't they stop at Bordelon? Why didn't they also check the former governor, who was also seriously affected by the mayhem? And um, on a good authority, we understand that the, the former governor wasn't happy with that move, and probably the message got to them. And so they had to retrace their step and find a way. Don't ask me what is behind that. <laughs> but it just tells us that there is more to... A lot of people feast on things that happen, politicians especially. They look at a whole lot of how to take advantage. Some look at the way of uh, reading a deeper meaning, which we don't want to go into here. But it tells us that um, we will find out as days roll by. Now, the issue of ISBA, it's something that I find, that's my opinion, I find quite hypocritical. Because if you look at the federal location, if you look at how these uh, revenues are distributed, Kano State is, doing, is not doing badly. And some of this money, I'm not an alcohol taker, at least two of you can testify to that. So, but it can, be, it can be hypocritical to know that um, you allow a state religion to destroy source of income source of enjoyment for some people, and you go about destroying how these monies came by. But I think it's something that should be restricted to people who practice these laws, who practice these religions. It shouldn't be about people who are running their day-to-day -day business. And it can be more hypocritical to see that some of these leaders who subscribe to these laws also take alcohol, in the confines of their bedroom and their sitting room. Is, is, is alcohol banned in Kano State? If you subscribe to Sharia law, you're not supposed to sell alcohol, you know, to that. So, but the definition of Sharia law is if you subscribe to it. 
I must be a Muslim and I do not subscribe to that law. So if I am not an adherent, if I am not practicing this Sharia law, if I subscribe to the conventional constitution that we all subscribe to, I'm not bound to this law. No. So I feel that this is condemnable, this is unaccepted. It shouldn't be something that, um, you know, the state law, the state isolated laws should embark on. Let me understand how this works. Um, is, if, if a foreigner is in Kano State, can, can the person drink alcohol? Definitely. That's why so, I said so, it's, 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 on, it's, on, it's, it's, it's not right. It sh that definitely, you can take alcohol, you can, you can engage in it, uh, whether you're drunk, that's another topic. But destroying it was uncalled for. That's source of livelihood for some families. So, I, 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 I go to Kano and have a I mean, I, I need to understand, you know, what, what then gives, what gives his bar the um, legal backing, if any, to destroy um, people, there other people's businesses. There is a legal backing to states that actually subscribe to Sharia law, which Kano is one of them. But I've yes. just given you the caveat. The caveat is if you subscribe, if you subscribe. to you. you remember the controversy of uh, the young man who who was sentenced to death. Fun. It was the same kind was sentenced to death. Now, the outcry by some well-meaning Nigerians is, why are you hasty to do something like that? If this man appeals, why do you want to take it against him? But if the man subscribes to the religion that I should be tried by this law, then I doubt, I doubt the they belief. understand it that way, the right. people that uh, practice it. I doubt they um, understand that the law is only applicable for those that are adherent to that uh, aspect of the law. But let's, let's move on now and see what we can do with the Guardian newspaper. Uh, the big one here is uh, Yoruba Tel Buhari, return Nigeria to true federalism. That's the big one with the Guardian. It has three riders. The first is, leaders demand equal treatment for all, want action on past constitutional summits, task government on insecurity. Uh, before we go on to talk about, um, you know, the other headlines to highlight them, I, I want your quick take on this, particularly when they talk about implementation of constitutional summits. So we've had uh, quite a number of them. Uh, the recommendation keeps... Uh, uh, gathering dust somewhere. I, I, I think it's a very, very good opportunity for the president to reconsider whatever he has said about uh, 2014 National Conference that is just going to gather dust. Uh, I think it's an opportunity for a president to right the wrongs of the former president, Goodluck Jonathan, because for a lot of people, they felt if you were really sincere about reworking the constitution, you should have started on time not when it was time for election and people felt, oh, he has an ulterior motive to get a second term. Now, this is his second term. He's not coming back. So why don't you give us the Nigeria a lot of people want? So why don't you do this right now? Let this document be, you know, checked. If you feel some you don't agree with, let it be reworked. Let's have another constitutional conference that doesn't have to go almost, I think about, is it about 50 billion then when they sat down? So whatever it is, the president has an opportunity to quickly look at the 2014 documents. And if somebody is saying past documents to maybe the pro narco conference that was also held about 10, 15 years ago, look at this document, take it to the National Assembly for more amendments, and let it become the new constitution we work with. We have seen most of those people in power when they were not in power, saying that we need a new document, we need another constitution. But when they get into power, the language changes because it is so one-sided, it's so what you know, it's skewed in their favor. So they hardly talk about it. But Buhari has little or nothing to lose if he gives us, if he bequeaths a new constitution to us. So do not see it as Yoruba leaders, do not see the Southwest leaders. And interestingly, some Northern leaders are beginning to buy in into a new document. Let people be self-sufficient. Let people look at how they can, you know, make money for themselves rather than running to federal capital every end of the month. All right, let's see some other headlines on the Guardian newspaper. Um, uh, something you're very familiar with, the U.S. elections. It's captured on the front page. This one says, uncertainty in U.S. poll as Trump goes to 
court. A couple of riders refuses to congratulate Biden. Lawsuit threatens country's democracy, says Dunn. NIIA boss warns Africa not to expect much from U.S. And then we have PDP ask Buhari to address national issues like Biden. Plenty of top points where you yeah. really have to do it in like 40. Oh, wow. Uh, interestingly, let me just quote one of your guests who said that uh, whoever is um, uh, deceiving the president that uh, is um, accepting defeat is a, is a, is a prerequisite. <laughs> for the election to be valid. So whether he accepts or not, whoever wins, <laughs> wins. So, and then that's one. Number two, um, whatever the issue is, I was told and I'm reliably informed that he has a right to approach the court. So it's entitled to that. And uh, number three is the fact that um, January 20 is already beckoning. Uh, I heard a very funny mathematics. I wish I would not be quoted, but let me say it. Someone says that, who told you that Joe Biden is going to be the 46th president? That he might even be 47th because he foresees a situation where Trump will resign, Mike Pence will take over, and Mike Pence will pardon whatever things he has done wrong. Then by January 20, the 47th president... That's so skewed and <laughs> very, very impossible to comprehend. So, <laughs> let, let, let's, let, let's just watch what is going on. I think Trump, is, don't forget, he is an actor. He is a celebrity before he became a president. Yeah. So watch out for more dramas. So some All other right. thing, I, I want to quickly um, get you also. Um, it's one of the things that we spoke about earlier with uh, some of the guests that we had. And I was asking... We always say, oh, well, these are the things we must learn from the elections. We must learn from the United States democracy. Uh, but my own challenge is whether we will learn. Um, and like I said earlier, these things are always good to admire and would say, oh, you know, this is the way it should be done. Where, you know, look at how beautiful the process is. But we just admire from afar. We never I want say, okay. to do the same. I, I listened to that conversation with, with the guest. I actually watch, you guys will be paying me as your, your big fan. Okay. I looked at that question. <laughs> I don't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think uh, INEC is closely monitoring the process. As we speak, the next election is going to be through electronic voting, even when the constitution is here to make it our process. But administrative decision allows INEC to determine the process of electing officers. So watch out for the mailing votes in Anambra election. Um, you, uh, 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 our electoral body is working towards it. And I cannot wait to have that. Where I have issues with them is that um, you might need to come to the polling center to still perform that. But let, it, let us allow it grow. We started the, uh, what do you call it now, the card reader. It was criticized at the beginning. Uh, can we ever get it? We don't have light. We don't have network all across Nigeria. But no, as we, we speak, it. it's a thing of the past. So let's allow electronic voting. We are learning. Uh -huh. Uh, Maybe not I, wish, I wish we had more time <laughs> to continue. Just it's it's, uh, it's fun having you here. Um, Thank you so Outside much. the arguments we have in the newsroom about these issues. I will issues. continue that. We will continue <laughs> it on the flip side. I want to thank you very much. Uh, Hello. For joining. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.